uh, whether it's my time in the Marine Corps in Iraq, or whether it's working my father's deli in Newark, or whether it's my time on the city council, I have always fought and pushed for equality and to give the opportunity for people to move forward. I'm excited about this campaign and this election, and particularly this de debate today, because I want to talk about our plans for the future of Jersey City. And we walk through these plans, I'm comfortable and confident in saying that we are the only ones that have a detailed plan on moving the city forward. And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to provide you copies of that. So you can see we're not just using buzzwords, we're not just using platform in the uh, big words, we're saying in detail, how are we going to move the city that's been left behind forward? I think you all know that there is a tale of two cities in this city. There's a city that has and a city that doesn't have. In the Marine Corps, we used to say you never leave a man behind, and that's what this election is about. Is I'm, I'm going to fight hard for Jersey City. I'm already fighting hard for Jersey City. I'm already demonstrating things that I'm doing. So just look into what I'm doing, simply. I'm here for the people. And, and one of the things it is, there's two type of people in this world, is, is givers, then it's takers, all right? And, and I'm one of the guys that, that's, that's a receiver. I, I, I love giving back to my community. I'm passionate about it. I know the problems that's going on. I have my, my thumb on the post. I understand the situations that's going on. I'm the only one speaking about what's going on in terms of drugs in our community. I'm the only one talking about that because, you know why? Because I know it, it exists. It, it exists in a, in a high form. You know, most of the kids that get uh, shot in the streets and picking up guns, you know, when you do the, the blood report, all of them is on PCP. And I've been trying to tell people about this dip. It's an epidemic right now. It's really killing our youth. It's really um, uh, struggling, making, put strain on our, our community because people is in harm's way because these people is out of their minds. You know, a lot of times when they pick up a gun and shoot somebody, the next, the next day they're in a the max tear, they don't even know how they got there. That's, that's what's really going on. And I believe in strong moral, social, and family values. And I am a man of principle and very disciplined. And I am, I am very appreciated and I'm very uh, grateful and I'm very impressed by seeing the discipline that uh, the way NAACE were I mean, say, presenting over here. And I believe in honesty, integrity, accountability. I believe in equal opportunity, equal rights, and justice for all. Uh, we've worked hard to uh, present a budget without a tax increase to the last, for the last three years, which we just presented to the City Council. Unlike other cities, we didn't lay off cops or firemen. Crime continues to trend down in our city. Last year, we had the lowest number of homicides in the history of records being kept in Jersey City. We're refurbishing parks, building new parks. Uh, we have a green city. And uh, in spite of what uh, my, my three opponents are saying, I think we have a great city here in Jersey City. We're always bringing investment to our city, development to our city, thereby tax dollars for our city coffers, that's tax relief, and also jobs for our citizens. So we've been working hard, and that's why we're running again. We want the opportunity to continue to work hard for the next four years to make this city the great city that I know it's destined to be. The mayor and I live in different cities, where I see a tale of two cities, and he says crime is trending downwards. I think first and foremost, when you look at what's happening day in and day out, it is reason to be concerned. Just today, you had a 70-year-old woman have a stray bullet hit her, and you will read about it tomorrow at 3 p.m. Don't tell me that when that is happening in the city at 3 p.m. that we are safe through and through. Now, we can do better. I think that is a fair point. Now, with regards to policing and improving the city, we have said time in and time out that we've put forward a plan to move the city forward on the policing front. However, however, it is important to recognize that it's not only policing. We've said again and again that it's after school programs and recreation because you cannot only police your way to a better city. You need to give opportunities for children on places where to go, to keep the schools open later, to partner with churches, and we've outlined how we're going to do it, how we're going to pay for it. So I am committed to expanding the recreation program, which is different than what's happened over the last four years when recreation in the city has been cut by 25%. Guess what? I'm doing it right now, okay? I'm doing it right now, okay? For so all the plans in the world, you can say that I'm doing it right now. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm building my own center right now, as we speak. You know, I understand the importance. I touch lives every day. 
You know, I've been doing it for 17 years. I know the struggles. That's why I'm here today. I'm fighting for you guys. I'm not fighting for a select few, dang a couple of carrots in somebody's face, let me get a job at the end. No, I'm fighting for everybody. The majority is what I'm fighting for, okay? All right, that's what I'm fighting for. And the majority rule. So that's why I'm here today. When it comes about to the infrastructure or the facilities which are provided by the government or the city government or by the federal government, it is not only the, the responsibility of the city government to take care of them, it's for the people. It's also the communities and the people who are benefited from that particular facility or the system or the project, they are also supposed and obligated to take care of this thing. So when, when it comes about the pool, I mean, say pools and after school program and recreation program, my formula and my belief is equal opportunities, equal rights and justice for all. And we have a great recreation department. He says we cut off about 20, 25%. We did that across the board. Three and a half years ago, when the new governor came in, he cut us $70 million, one city in one year. Of course we had to make cuts all across the board here in Jersey City. And we are having some uh, problems because the state cut $70 million. That is, I, I wonder, I mean, say how many can repeatedly mention one thing over and over again, where I have mentioned that that's the reason the state has cut those funding, when the state says that we have so many I mean, it's such a huge bureaucracy. There are too many director positions, too many administrators over there, and we are awarding them a, a lucrative contracts and pay raises as well as promotions. So state thinks that we are the wealthiest city on the earth. We, they, we don't need any help. That's why this is, I believe, a state is justified in cutting even 10 million, 70 million, or 700 million dollars. You all, as residents, under this administrative administration, have, have had an 84% tax increase. You don't need to believe one or the other one, but just look at your tax bill. It is what it is. With regards to recreation being cut by 25%, and when he says everybody was a cut across the board, it is hard to say that you still believe that when you give out free cars and free gas and free favors to favorite city employees while cutting recreation. Now, finally, we weren't asked you weren't asked the question, but we have put forward, writtenly, a commitment that every single leader in the city that we get to a point in my administration will be a Jersey City resident. Plain and simple as that. And then finally, on tax abatements, which was the question essentially, we are going to use them judiciously to incentivize development in the south side of Jersey City. And one of the things that I want to do is get the CEOs of the, the major companies that's on the waterfront, get them at one on one table, on one accord, and let them know the issues that's going on in our community so they can better serve us. They, they need to be educated about our problems that we have, not just go down there asking for money because that just don't work neither. You have to have a relationship. So I'm posing to have a relationship with them. And also with the abatements, one of the things is, it is a good and bad thing, and one of the things as a, a, a strong administration, under my guidance, we're going to enforce the rule. They say that you know a lot of the abatements is have some stipulations to it. And, and one of the stipulations is, you know, you must hire Jersey City residents. Well, you go down on the waterfront, you ain't got no Jersey City people down there. I can tell you that right now. So one of the things we have to do is enforce the rules to it. And we gotta enforce the rules to it. And these guys are down there, and I don't know why they're not enforcing the rules. I'm not here, I'm not down at City Hall right now, but I just don't understand the reason why they're not enforcing the rules. Because you have to enforce the rules. And one of the things we propose to do is have this committee come and visit our, our, our community, you know, so they can take a look at the desperation. We, we need help. You know, we, we need to have these people come and identify and make a connection. Okay, that's what it's about. It's about connection. And it's about changing the system as well. And I'm the only one up here that want to take it to the United States Supreme Court, Earl, and fight that every cop should be living in Jersey City. Not just stopping at the states, you know, because that's a, that's a legit argument. Because that, that'll help our city a tremendous... Amount. My record on the tax abatements speak for itself. I do not support long-term tax abatements on the waterfront. Plain and simple, I do not believe they're, long, they're no longer necessary. I believe we can move the city forward by incentivizing development in areas that need it, like Ward F, Ward A, Ward B. And what we want to do is provide hope. It's, you know, it's, it's only a few jobs out there. We're going to provide hope, and we want to let people understand that if you come up with some ideas that's good for the city, that's good for yourself, you know, we want to provide entrepreneurs. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur, so that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to be innovative, and we want to let people know that they can do it. 
And that's what we want to do under our administration, under the Walker team. We want to let people know they have hope. Hope is everything right now. You know, it's, it's a limited jobs. It is a lot of cuts, like the man is saying, but it's limited jobs. So we have to be as people and human come together and work together as a, as a common goal and support each other. Not being on one end, not pointing a finger, not doing that. I'm saying coming to the, to, together, a collaborative effort to turn this city around. And I know we can do it because when I was growing up in the city, it was happening that way, okay? The real community pieces, the Bob Hammonds of the world, okay? The William Schaefer's of the world. Like, where's he got the Glenn Cunningham's of the world? We're all these sort of people. Well, I need the, the, the people in our community to stand up. And as far as an unemployment is concerned, turning to uh, uh, coming up to the question, it is not only there's a one. I mean, it's a way that we can adopt and we can make practice. No, it's a multifactorial situation where one on one on one side we need to engage the real, I mean, say the, the religious leaders. On the other hand, we need to engage the business administrators. At the same time, we need to engage these developers. And and the last and most important thing, we need somebody sitting in the city hall who should care about those people who are unfortunately less fortunate, who don't have that many opportunities, who don't have those very sources and those very in, in, I mean, say influence in the in the society and the system. So it's a multifactorial. Now, and at the same time, if we, for example, we take the uh, matter of the abatements, that is correct. I believe that it's unfair and unjustified allocation of abatements to for 10 years to one group, for 20 years and 40 years to another group. I can't believe you said that uh, I lied about something in, in a in a uh, mail or something, Steve. If anything that you put out in the filth that you've been putting out about me for the last week and on TV and mailers and handouts, if any of that were true, I wouldn't be here, folks. I'd be sitting in some federal penitentiary someplace. Number one. Now, now let me answer the question. And uh, I invite everybody. Every initiative that we put before the city council that would bring investment, development, tax relief, and jobs to this city. Almost every single one, Steve, you have voted against. And now I'm going to tell you about the implements. Take it easy, Mo. Now I'm going to tell you about what we're doing here. We must attract private development, private investment, city, county, state, federal. That money's going. It's gone. We can't hire our way out of this, and we've been doing that. That's why you have investment development coming to this city. We must be business friendly because it brings not just development, not just abatements, it brings tax relief to our city, to our citizens, and it also provides jobs for our citizens. The AMB, well, you let me finish, folks. The AMB warehouse is going up, okay? When that, we fought the city council to get the zoning change approved. Steve voted against it. That, that was a dump. Brought us no tax dollars, no jobs. It's going up now. There's now green space there. Right. And it's going to bring over a million dollars a year to our city coffers. 260 union construction jobs during the build-out and 800 jobs aimed at Jersey City residents when that takes place within about 15 months from now. Yeah. <laughs> Let me start by saying that the mayor touches on lies on, on tapes and videos. My commercial mayor is your conversation at a, at, a, at a diner that you frequent with an FBI informant. It's as simple as that. Now let me say this. In that diner, in that, in, in that diner, in that diner, there are four people. There are you, the FBI informant, your treasure where the money went, who is sitting in a federal Texas prison, a 78-year-old grandma right now who took the fall, and a consultant of yours who committed suicide the day after. So if you have my if you, wait, wait, if you are saying that the standard is that you were not arrested, if that is the standard that we are going on and striving for in Jersey City, that you are okay because you weren't arrested, that is a fundamental problem that we are talking about today. Okay? AMD warehouse, you must think we're all stupid. That was approved eight years ago. You put a hard hat on, break ground last week. I don't put week. hard hats on, Steve. Break man. ground last this week. First and say, piece and of say. BS. Okay. Mail, please. Mailings in your commercial are a cut and paste job. Everything taken out of context to create a piece of fiction to portray me as a corrupt 
public official, you even say I took cash. It's all nonsense, Steve, and it's filthy. It's because you got to attack the system and make the cops live in Jersey City. It's not just a state. No, we're going to go all the way to the White House because it's what's right for us locally. If we had the cops living in here, it would be a better city. If we had our teachers living here, it would be a better city. If we had our firefighters living here, it would be a better city. So don't hand me you know, the Supreme Court or the state. No, let's go to the, the United States Supreme Court because we understand that we need these sort of people to, to make, make up our community. They're professionals. They'll take ownership. It wouldn't be people on the corner. Okay, there would be more conversations. It would be, it would be a better community. And that's one of the things I want to implement. You know, let's get back to the cops. When I say Bob Hammond, I'm not making his name up. We got in trouble. Guess what we call Bob? You know, Bob would come to your house, right? He would ask you, you know, what you did. He would understand what you did. He would tell you your rights. And he would give you a tip, okay, on how to try to figure things out. We don't have that going on right now at all. So that's one of the number one things on my platform is community policing. And once again, you got to get back to the fundamentalist things. You have to have an education system that works. You know, that's what, that's the real problem. We got to educate our youth. That's where all the stuff is going on at. And when I talk about this drug, it's ridiculous. This drug, they now doing startup fluid now. They dipping it in a bombing fluid, now they're doing startup fluid because it's cheaper. They dip in PCP, they smoking it, and it's, and it's killing them. Everyone would like all of our police, fire, teachers, and every city employee to live in the city. But uh, we tried that a long time ago in our state Supreme Court, as Earl pointed out. Said you can't do it. You don't have any right, Jared, to bring that to the U.S. Supreme Court, okay? That's a local issue. It's been decided you're not going to get there on that issue. And we hired about 22 cops because we fought hard to get a federal grant. And a lot of our citizens signed those letters so that we could get a cops grant that we mailed them to our federal representatives. We got the money. We hired 22 new officers about seven, eight months ago and we dedicated them to police presence, to foot patrol, as you would say. Our police department needs a complete overhaul in every aspect. First of all, they need to, complete, to have the enough and sufficient manpower to deal with the situation. Number two, they need to have proper training, especially sensitivity training, professional training, how they should I mean, say, deal with the minorities and how they should deal with certain situations. Number three, they should be equipped with the latest technology so that, I mean, say they should have the, all the available tools and uh, uh, materials needed for this one. When you think about the safety of Jersey City today and the numbers, there are 2,000 violent crimes last year. That is a real number. Some of our districts are amongst the busiest in the state of New Jersey. That is relative to Camden, Newark. Patterson. Those are real things. When you think about police manpower and how they are used today, we are near an all-time low on police manpower. We have put forward, and I will provide it to you at the end of the night, detailed plans, not just saying community-based policing. We told you how we're going to get there, how we're going to increase visibility, not to just apprehend after, but to prevent the crimes before. Because that's really what this is about, about decentralization of command to increase accountability. And most importantly that's in here is I recognize that you cannot only police your way to a better city. You need after-school programs, you need recreation, you need to partner with the churches in order to really provide safety. So it's community policing and it's recreation working together to provide a safer Jersey City. I've been to all of the schools and I and I don't think they're as horrible as they have been portrayed in the media and by other places. We have a great high school McNair, we have a, a good number of solid grammar schools here in Jersey City, some of a lot of our high schools, the other high schools need some help, but every place I've gone I've been impressed by the upkeep in the schools, by the teachers' attitudes who want to teach these youngsters and by how polite these youngsters are and they seem to want to learn. Okay, but it's, it can't be answered in the schools alone. A lot of this stuff starts at home. It starts with the churches. It starts, you know, you can't, how are you going to teach a kid who's, uh, whose mother was 15 when, when, when the kid, the child was born, was not doing the right thing. The kid goes to school, he doesn't get fed properly, he's not paying attention, there's no guidance, discipline, and importantly, love 
at home because there's no experience there. This is a problem that starts in the home. The churches need to contribute to it. The community needs to contribute to it. And of course, our teachers have to do the best, our teachers' aid and our, our staffs at school and our principals to bring out the best in these youngsters and make sure that they're prepared to go forward in this world as independent, productive human beings and that's the whole goal of the schools. We need to work on it and we need to work on it for a long time. Problem can't be corrected, corrected overnight. Let me say that this is another big disagreement between the mayor and I. When I look at the nature of the school systems here, and I say that the inaction of this administration over the last 10 years, it is alarming. You had 35 out of 40 failing schools. Outside of McNair, you had a 7% college readiness rate. That is scary. You had a 60% graduation rate. Think about those numbers. It is alarming and nobody said anything. I fought to change the superintendent because the same way that I want to be held accountable next year, I think that the school leadership should be held accountable. And that is a fundamental difference because if you look who's running on the mayor's ticket, it's the failed superintendent who's running for council in Ward A. We have put forward, we have put forward a partnership plan. Now look, I want to point this out because this is a letter to teachers and Board of Education employees because the mayor is going around with his friends today and saying Steve wants to privatize this and fire that. And let me tell you something, again, it's just not true. The reality of the situation is that they are using fear to push you out of desperation. The reality is that I am the one up here who has never supported vouchers. The mayor wrote a letter to the state assembly in support. It's fact. Look at it. My track record speaks for itself. And if you don't believe me, look at the people who are supporting me, from labor leaders to community leaders in Ward F, who would never, ever, ever want to hurt you. So if they're saying that I'm on the right side of the education issues, I'm not asking you to trust me on it. Trust them, because they've been in the community for 30 and 40 years, and they want to see the school in the vote. Until and unless we have politics and special interest groups influence out of our education, our public school system cannot and will not work effectively and efficiently. Thank you. It takes a village. It absolutely takes everybody. And we need to start looking in our, in our mirrors and, and saying to ourselves, we need to be a little bit more responsible in what we're doing. Because I deal with the kids every day. The parent participation, it needs to grow, okay? All that stuff needs to grow. We need to come together. And the only person that, that could bring that together up here today is me. Because you know why? I'm doing it right now today. I'm doing it right now. Every day. Every day. This is what I do. Every single day. So I want y'all to understand that. That's the difference between us. And, and once again, the system. We have to go against the system. We gotta say no. I don't, I don't agree with you know the Supreme Court. We have 250,000 people saying no. That's a strong voice. So we have to stick together. We have to fight against the system, okay? It's not about these guys. I mean, they make it about you know, argument, pointing fingers. It's about all you guys here. That's why I'm here. That's what it's about. But it's about approving this state order, taking it in a new direction, and letting people know we have hope, okay? I represent hope. I don't represent none of this stuff they're talking about. I represent hope, okay? I come from the genes of power. Curry. He was a great man in this town, okay? And that's where I come from. So I don't come from these guys from, I don't, I don't know where Steve come from, but I don't, I don't come from, I, I, I just don't know where, I come from Jersey City, Marvin Hayes, born and raised, Jerry Walker. I have a nickname in the neighborhood. They call me G Walk. I connect with people. I'm friendly. You can come up to me. I'm humble. I'm here to help. Okay? I'm here to help and provide hope and change the direction of this city. I, I was talking earlier when I, uh, with regards to jobs about Danya, who is a, lives in Bergen Lafayette, who's a third generation plumber and looks at all the construction on the waterfront here and says that I don't have an opportunity. Or Naeem, who I met the other day, who has an infraction a couple of years ago and looks at all the progress in Jersey City. He lives in Ward F and says, why is there no job for me? When you look at this administration, you cannot say, because of the structure of government that we have here, only one person has the ability to hire. That's how we're structured. That is what is under what's called the Faulkner Act. It is the mayor. As council of uh, Ward E, I am very proud of my record. Prevailing wage ordinance, giving people an opportunity to move from low income to middle income jobs. The only affordable housing plan ever put forward here that the mayor didn't support. The strict
strip this pay to play in the state of New Jersey. Those things I got accomplished as being the minority on the city council. We have put forward a plan, and again, I will provide it to you so you can read it in concrete detail of how we are going to create jobs in Ward F. How are we going to revamp employment and training? How are we going to partner it with people who are looking for jobs as a job bank and people who have jobs on the waterfront? How are we going to hold them accountable actually for the commitments that they made to you and make sure that they follow through on that? Talk about education, talking about expungement programs. We have that documented on how we are going to accomplish from where we are here to move it forward. I'm running for mayor because I believe in this and I believe in the opportunity for all of Jersey City. And I'm proud of my record, Dr. Thompson. I'm proud of it. First of all, jobs for this city. It's got to come from the private sector. I've said it before. It's got to be private business. You must be business friendly. Bring the business here. Bring the development here, bring the investment here, not only tax relief, it is jobs, it is jobs for our citizens. We've been doing that. Now Steve talks about his plan about to get employment rolling throughout Jersey City and get more jobs. Steve, you've been on the council eight years, you came up with your plan three months before an election, just as your police plan, three months before an election. Mayor, you and, blocked and, it over the course of the year. You're just not being truthful here. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. You're just not being truthful. Last three months. Mayor, you're just not being honest. You're just not being honest. All right, all right, all right. Key is to continue to be business friendly, bring investment, thereby development, thereby jobs to our city. And Thank you, Mayor. And when, if I am the mayor, what I will do, I will address all these issues. Control the base, abuse of money and power, take the politics out of the system, and reach out to the churches, business community, as well as focus on the root cause of those problems, unemployment and crime. Let me just tell you guys a story. I'm coming from this perspective, when you talk about crime in the streets. You know, 1994, there was three, three people murdered in Lafayette Projects. And the three people who was murdered in Lafayette Projects was my family members, okay? I'm not coming up here trying to, to pull a wool over your face or anything like that. I'm coming up here with mere concern about what's going on. And it never been solved, all right? My cousin was five years old. They found her in a toilet bowl. The perpetrator put her, her head in a toilet bowl, okay? To, to understand that she was dead or alive. And that's how we found her. I, I remember seeing, I was overseas at the time, I rushed back. I remember seeing it on Channel 9 when my grandfather standing there with tears. I'm coming from that. I'm coming from bringing back hope. And as a community, I know a lot of you guys is on the campaign trail with any of these um, parties up here right here. They have money, they can pay y'all. Understand time is hard. Take the money, okay? Take the money, but when you go into that booth, you gotta have a social conscious, and you better understand what's going on there, and who's gonna do the best for our community, okay? I go around what F, the number one thing I hear about is how we don't stick together, how we can't patronize each other. You know, I, walk, I go around town, Ray Rigolato, he's running on my ticket. You know, every Dominican spot in town have his picture in there because they stick together. When we gonna stick together is what the question is right here today. When we gonna stick together? When we gonna say these people is not for our community? Okay, they're not. When we gonna stick together, come together and make a better community for ourselves? When we gonna look ourselves in the mirror? I want every parent to challenge themselves. When there's a parent-teacher meeting, you need to be there, okay? All right? We have to start in our own Working it out. Hope is what I'm telling you about, ladies and gentlemen. Hope. I come from a Curry family. My name is Jerry Walker on May 14th. You better think about when you go on that booth. You better think about when you pull that level. 1A, baby. The Lord gave me that. 1A. I think I will start by saying that I am a man of dignity, a man of principle, and man of very tight discipline. I believe in honesty, integrity, accountability. I am a man of my words, there is nobody who can influence me, intimidate me, or buy me as my opinion. And I believe that the people have the right for their government. I believe that the government and the democracy is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, not the other way. I believe that the special interest groups, they are to be eliminated from the government in their influence and everything. I believe in a small, efficient, effective, open, transparent government that should be working with the people and for the people and there should not be any complaint about minorities being ignored or neglected. 
I believe that the development and the opportunities should be all uniform and fairly distributed throughout the communities as well as the city and the people. I believe that all the residents of Jersey City and everywhere, they deserve equal opportunity in appointments, in employment and in other uh, availabilities. I believe that we should work together because this is one city we all live in and believe that community is made by all of together. Not one person does not make a community. We all work, have to work together if we want to improve our situation. I believe that we should work on for second chance and we should work on to provide all those resources for rehabilitation of those individuals who need to help them get the job, to help them get the training to the job, and for those who need rehabilitation in drugs and violence. And I believe for the second chance, because I believe we need to develop communities and not the prison. And lastly, I will say, I believe in equal opportunity, equal right, and justice for all. And Time. For I gotta respond very quickly to some of the things that the councilman has said. That uh, I'm for vouchers, first of all. Please give the mayor an opportunity yeah, to here. express Relax. himself. Nonsense. I wrote a letter on behalf of the Opportunity Scholarship Act because cities around the state, their kids were going to be included in that. We were going to be excluded. That was money coming to people all over Jersey City who wanted to send their kids to a different school. I didn't want our, our kids to be cut out, and that's, what, that's the letter that I vote. I've never approved the vouchers, okay? Second of all, Miss Reverend McRae's bus. I've heard about it four different times. We know about it. It was horrible. But the truth, the fact is, the Jersey City Police Department apprehended that guy, and he's under prosecution right now. You know, Steve was talking about the schools and how his passion for education, as he said at another time, for the better part of a decade, he has not voted in a school board election. I think, Steve, the first time you voted was to vote for yourself when you were running against Congressman Menendez in 2004 in a Democratic primary. Listen, we worked hard. This city is better. These guys are not going to say that. Their job is to say the city's going down the tubes and it's Healy's fault. Vote for us, not for him. Well, I'm proud of our record. I'm proud of this city. It is the gateway to the cultural, commercial, financial center of the world. Business is coming here, residents are coming here because we have a great city, because we're bringing investment, we're bringing jobs. And yes, the cops are doing a great, great job, way better than other places around the state. And that's why people want to come here and live. And that's why investment continues to come here. That's why I'm running. That's why we're building parks all over the city, refurbishing parks. Come over the Skyway and look to your right when you get to Jersey City, from Newark to Jersey City. And remember what was there, junkyard. Time. It's changed for the better. That's why I'm running again. Councilman Fuller. I'm not going to refute every single point that the mayor made because it's not good use of my time. I am going to say this though. He talks about my voting record and he omits that last year as the mayor of Jersey City, he didn't even vote in the Board of Education election. And what does that say? But that's not where we're going to go. I am going to say this. Yeah, I didn't vote. I didn't vote when I graduated college until 2004 because like many people in this community and throughout Jersey City, they are not civically minded when they are younger. And I didn't know that. And you know what, Mayor? You know, while you were giving out four and five jobs to your friends, I was in Iraq defending this country. So don't say don't say, don't say for one second that you question my commitment to this country overall as far as my voting record because I was in the desert during or that time frame. Now let me start this. People ask every single day, why are you running for mayor? And I tell them the reason is it's the same exact reason there are 200 people here tonight listening to the things that we have to say. It's because you love Jersey City. And that's how I feel. I love this city. I love the culture, the diversity, the different neighborhoods. And when I think about it today, I am concerned whether it's taxes that have been up 85% or violent crimes or more corruption than any city in the country of this size. There are reasons to be concerned, to say the least. And when I think about the potential of this city, I don't think about being better than just the mayor's Jersey City or the best city in Hudson County, I believe that we can be the best mid-sized city in the United States of America. And that means every single community. Because we have things
truths here that we take for granted, that we shouldn't accept mediocrity. Liberty State Park, diversity, look around this room. We have a history like few other cities. We have so much to be proud of, and we should not accept mediocrity. That is what this election is about to me. When you go to the vote on May 14th, think about the future of the city. We are not saying that things are going okay and justifying just being reactionary that we arrested somebody. We should be thinking about stopping those crimes. That's really what we should be thinking about. How to make our schools better, not just saying that they're okay. May 14th, think about the future of Jersey City. Thank you.